welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers the lawful orders by police officers, the vagueness doctrine, and probable cause, and is brought to us by Rolando Bass's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I would like to invite you all to check out the ATA Patreon page, where you can find uncensored, ad-free, and exclusive content that you can't get anywhere else. On the morning of December 10th, 2019, in Frederick, Maryland, Deputy Sufyan Labe of the Frederick County Sheriff's Department and his partner pulled over YouTuber Rolando Bass for allegedly failing to stop at a red traffic signal before making a right turn. After being pulled over, Mr. Bass partially rolled down his car window and prepared to hand over his license and registration. The officers approached the rear of Mr. Bass's vehicle and ordered him to roll down his window. Can you put your window down for me, please? No, I'd rather not put my window put down. Put your window down now. <laughs> oh, he's yelling. Roll your windows down now. I refuse to put my window down. Roll your window down. I'm not. Open the door. No. <laughs> Open the door. No. What you jumping? What you grabbing my for? Open the door. Why are you grabbing my doors like that? What are you doing? Open the door. No. Roll down that window so he can talk to you. My window is down so he can talk to me. It's not my fault he's scared to approach. What? You got gun, You got your hands on guns and you expect me to just... Nah, that's crazy. Nah, man. Y'all sitting here looking like y'all ready to shoot me. You mad because I won't roll the window down some more? Come up here. You just walked up here. Why is he scared to walk up here? That's it, man. Get out of here. Now you don't got no problem walking up here. What are you doing, man? What are you doing, bro? You got... Bro, I was, I was about to roll my window down and I sit there... You put your window down with you your gun on your head. You know how many times I asked you before I even went for my gun? Oh well. What is the problem with Is it a lawful order? Yes it is. No it's not. Yes it is. Deputy Labe insists that his demands that Mr. Bass roll down his car window constituted a lawful order. As we have discussed many times on ATA, there is no specific legal requirement that citizens roll down the windows of their vehicles more than necessary to facilitate communication. However, Section 21-103 of the Transportation Article of the Maryland Code states that an individual may not willfully disobey any lawful order or direction of any police officer. The statute does not define what constitutes a lawful order or direction, and courts have been silent on the issue, so it is unclear whether Deputy Labe's order to roll down the window was actually lawful. The law is clear that police officers have the authority to order drivers and passengers out of a vehicle during a traffic stop. In the 1977 case of Pennsylvania v. Mims, the U.S. Supreme Court determined that police officers may lawfully order drivers to step out of the vehicle during a legal traffic stop. Although I have routinely noted that there is no legal precedent or law that compels citizens to roll their window down, there is still a serious possibility that a court might determine that Deputy Labe's order to roll down the window was lawful. In most situations, there is not a strong argument that rolling down a car window all the way serves officer safety. However, in this situation, the officers claimed they could not see inside the vehicle due to the window tint, which could be perceived as a threat to officer safety by a court. Because the intrusion of rolling down a window further is even more minimal than getting out of the vehicle, it is possible a court could decide that the order to roll down the window was lawful when weighed against the officer's safety concerns. No cases have challenged the legitimacy of such an order, and although there are no laws against such an act, that does not mean that a court would rule in favor of the citizen. The odds of a case making it to the Supreme Court based on whether the order to roll down a window is lawful are very low, and a decision like this would likely be left to lower courts to determine. Each court may reach vastly different conclusions based on a variety of factors, such as the historical rulings of the court, the local cultural differences, and the circumstances of the situation being challenged. Although it is highly unlikely that a court would uphold an arrest of a citizen for simply failing to roll their window down, these situations call into question the validity of the lawfulness of such an order. What lawful order is it? Does I'm it, giving uh, you an order to roll your windows down. I and can't how is see that lawful? We cannot see in here. Oh, well, I didn't know that. You're, you're trying to protect you're making ourselves. a stop that would have I'm been a warning. I'm trying to protect myself. I'm trying to protect myself, bro. How are you doing that by not hey, rolling the windows down? I ain't even see y'all behind me. Driver's license registration. Here you go. You want to answer that question Driver's you asked, or you want to cut yourself off and me off while I'm Driver's answering your question? Driver's license registration. Oh, all right. Here you go. It's been ready for you the whole time. Playing games for no reason. You're not playing any yeah, games. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. It's a simple command. Roll your windows down just so I can make sure that I don't have any threats coming up to the vehicle. All right, well, 
Come on. I ain't like, and I ain't you, like and your you're approach. That I ain't you're like your approach. Protect, how are you protecting yourself by not doing a simple order? Bruh, I, I feel like I should have pulled off. Uh, that's a bad idea. Hey, hey, I don't give a if that keep me alive, bro. You putting your hands How on your doing bro. That? I had two men with guns at the back of my car telling me to roll my window down. Yeah. That makes perfect sense for me to just it do it. I should have pulled inside the of the car. That's not my that's not my problem. It's not illegal right, for me to have, have my a, window have up. You a cop, you should know that. I'm gonna give you your commands, I need you to follow them. Turn the vehicle off. You asking me to step out of the car? Not yet. I'm telling you to turn the vehicle off. Put that out for him. Is your door open? No, it's locked. not. You need to do that for me right now. Are you pulling me out the car? Yes, sir. All right, cool. You should have said that in the first place. You talking to me like I'm three years old. So keep that rolling, but it's not going to be in your hand. In the process of commanding Mr. Bass to step out of the vehicle, Deputy Labe orders Mr. Bass to put out his cigarette and to not keep his GoPro camera in his hand. As with the order to roll down the window, it is unclear whether these orders are lawful. The uncertainty regarding what constitutes an unlawful order is not unique to Maryland. In fact, even though most states have a statute that requires citizens to obey the lawful orders of police officers, state laws, federal regulations, and court decisions generally fail to provide definitions of what constitutes a lawful order during a traffic stop. The need to clarify the meaning of a lawful order received national attention in 2015 when a 28 year old African American woman named Sandra Bland was arrested after refusing to put out her cigarette at a Texas state trooper's request, which the trooper insisted was a lawful order. Ms. Bland died by apparent suicide in a jail cell three days later. Section 542.501 of the Texas Transportation Code states that an individual may not willfully fail or refuse to comply with a lawful order or direction of a police officer. As with the Maryland statute, the Texas law does not define what constitutes a lawful order. Because of the lack of certainty about the meaning of a lawful order, some criminal defendants have argued that similar statutes are unconstitutionally vague. As explained by the U.S. Supreme Court in the 2015 case of Johnson v. United States, the vagueness doctrine is based in the right to due process. The government violates due process when it takes away someone's life, liberty, or property under a criminal law so vague that it fails to give ordinary people fair notice of the conduct it punishes, or so standardless that it invites arbitrary enforcement. It would seem, given the confusion over what constitutes a lawful order, that these statutes would be unconstitutional under the vagueness doctrine. However, courts that have reviewed this issue have generally disagreed. For example, in the 2006 case of State v. Illigren, the Oregon Supreme Court rejected an argument that Section 162.247 of the Oregon Revised Statutes, which criminalizes refusing to obey a lawful order by a peace officer, was unconstitutionally vague. The defendant argued that the statute failed to give fair warning because determining the lawfulness of the peace officer's order requires sophisticated legal analysis and depends on the factual circumstances and conduct giving rise to the order. The court Court disagreed, concluding that the ordinary citizen must be presumed to know and understand the general parameters of the term lawful order. The lack of clarity regarding lawful order statutes often requires citizens to guess which police orders they must comply with and which orders they do not have to follow. This encourages blind obedience to police commands and creates a highly volatile environment where a small disagreement or misunderstanding can quickly escalate into a deadly situation like Sandra Bland's. Until the government takes action to clarify the extent of police officers' authority to lawfully command citizens, unnecessary escalations in police encounters will continue to occur. Keep it rolling, but it's not going to be in my hand. All right, I'm I'll lock the me. door now, please. I'll be with you in a second. I'm giving you commands. I need you to listen to them. Are you clear? Yo, what's the commands, man? I got shit to do. What's up? Cool. And lock your fingers behind your head. After extracting Mr. Bass from his vehicle, the deputies conduct a Terry frisk and order Mr. Bass to stand near their patrol car while they conduct a search of his vehicle. While waiting for the officers to finish their search, Mr. Bass engages in dialogue with a backup deputy who arrived late to the scene. Nah, well, when they wait, you weren't there with the way they approached my car. Okay. So uh, that's, that's what I, set the tone listen, for me. Listen, this is my first interaction with that, you. That's cool, that's cool, but yeah. it's your first interaction after a reaction with your man. So right. it is what it is. I'm pissed off. Right, it, it is what it is. I understand you're being real respectful. Me, my bad. You you're being real out. respectful and stuff like that. Yeah. But I haven't done nothing illegal since this whole stop. 
Well, so I don't care if he feels a certain way and he's stepping it up. I haven't done nothing illegal. I don't answer questions. Is, that's my right. There, I didn't roll my window down. It's my right. And that's mar how I'm marijuana doing. is not marijuana is not illegal. It's decriminalized in Maryland. I know you got Virginia tax. That's why I was asking you where you from, man. I don't got. You don't, I don't, you don't, have, don't, I don't it, answer, it ain't nothing illegal in my car. I told you that. I you answer. don't want to answer questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you what's going on, okay? So Maryland marijuana is decriminalized. Anything under 10 grams is considered a civil citation. Anything over 10 is criminal. I'm very okay, aware. So you have you have odor of marijuana in your vehicle, so he's gonna find out. And that's why I asked you: Is there anything else in the car that we need to know about? But you didn't. You told me you didn't want to answer questions. Mm -hmm. The officers claim to smell an odor of marijuana in Mr. Bass's car and use the odor to justify a search of his vehicle. Although Maryland decriminalized the personal possession of fewer than 10 grams of marijuana in 2014. It is still a civil offense to possess an amount under that threshold. It also remains a crime to possess an amount over this threshold, possess any amount with the intent to distribute it, or drive while under the influence of marijuana. This partial decriminalization of marijuana has led to a series of decisions by the Court of Appeals of Maryland, which is the highest court in the state, that flesh out when police officers can use the odor of marijuana as a justification for a search, seizure, or arrest post-decriminalization. For example, in the 2017 case of Robinson v. State, the court determined that a law enforcement officer has probable cause to search a vehicle based on an odor of marijuana emanating from the vehicle, reasoning that marijuana in any amount was still an illegal substance, and therefore, the odor of marijuana gives rise to probable cause to believe that the vehicle contains contraband or evidence of a crime. However, in the 2020 case of Lewis v. State, the same court concluded that the mere odor of marijuana emanating from a person rather than a vehicle, without more, does not provide the police with probable cause to support an arrest and a full-scale search of the arrestee. While this evidence would give the police probable cause to search a vehicle, the court reasoned that, because individuals have a heightened expectation of privacy in their person as compared to their automobile, the arrest and search in the Lewis case were not justified. As marijuana is legalized and decriminalized across the country, state courts will have to work out how this change in status will impact the rights of citizens. In the meantime, it will remain unclear, to both officers and citizens, what level of authority officers have to police marijuana possession, and at what point they have overstepped their bounds. If I would, so, if, so, so based on the oh, odor, he's going to search the car, right. he's going to pat you down. Let me ask you, let me ask you yeah. a question. If I were to answer your question... It makes it a lot easier. No, you would have still searched my car. That's yeah, regardless. Yeah, that's okay, so what, what do I... Regardless. You said so if I, did, I didn't answer the question, so you're searching the car. Yeah. You guys going to do this anyway. I'm going to make you do your job. That's it's fine. just that simple. I'm not that's answering fine. any questions. And, and that's fine. Right. Uh, like, I appreciate I thought, you like, being very professional while you're dealing with me. But, look, I, but other than that, the way he acting, I'm set off. So yeah. he stepped it up, I'm going to step it up. After searching the vehicle, the officers do not find any illegal substances or weapons, and Deputy Lobby returns to his patrol car to begin writing Mr. Bass a citation. After a brief debate about whether Mr. Bass can film Deputy Labe while he writes the citation, the deputy exits his patrol car to hand over the ticket. What you got for me? And what's your name? LeBay. LeBay? That's cute. 581. What's your, what you got? There you go. That's your copy. Do you want to take it or no? Do you Serious want to take to stop? It? Do you want to take this? Can you hold it still so I can read it? Because you ain't explaining it to me. Which is the professional way to do it. That's the protocol. Oh, it's failure to stop it. Oh, let's do this. All right. Yep. Good luck have proving nice that day. one. You have a good day. And thank you very much. After searching the vehicle and finding no marijuana, Officer Labe issued Mr. Bass a traffic citation for failure to stop at a red traffic signal and failure to stop at a red traffic signal before a right turn. The citation was filed in the Frederick County District Court the next day. Mr. Bass challenged the citation but was ultimately found guilty on February 18, 2020 and was assessed a $115.50 fine. Overall, Deputy Labe and the other Frederick County deputies get a B plus because although they remained within their authority throughout the encounter, Deputy Labe maintained a hostile and condescending attitude and failed to employ any measure of de-escalation even when Mr. Bass offered him the opportunity to do so. When the deputies explained to Mr. Bass that they could not see inside his vehicle because of his tint, Mr. Bass shifted his attitude and understood why the deputies were concerned. But Instead of capitalizing on the opportunity to de-escalate, Deputy Labe continued to be rude and confrontational. The deputy's attitude only made this interaction more difficult by influencing Mr. Bass to be less cooperative. And as we have seen on many episodes of ATA, this type of behavior has the potential to escalate any interaction into an unnecessary physical altercation. The deputies carried out a legitimate search and never placed Mr. Bass into handcuffs, and nothing they did was outside the bounds of their authority. 
As mentioned before, it is debatable whether Deputy Labe's order to roll down the window was lawful. And given that there are no laws or court cases to draw any conclusions from, it is difficult to fault the deputies for issuing such an order. In situations where the citizen refuses to roll down their window, Officers are well within their authority to extract the citizen from the vehicle, and Deputy Labe could have employed the MIMS ruling more effectively, instead of using Mr. Bass's refusal to comply as a catalyst to escalation. Ultimately, Mr. Bass was allowed to go free with a relatively minor citation, but there is no doubt that Deputy Labe would benefit from additional de-escalation and sensitivity training. Mr. Bass gets an A-, minus because although he could have exercised his right to remain silent more effectively, he remained calm and collected throughout the encounter, maintained a respectable balance between exercising his rights and complying with the deputy's orders, and refused to allow the deputy to intimidate or insult him. Mr. Bass carried himself well and did not allow the deputy's attitude to escalate the encounter. Based purely on this interaction alone, it appears that Mr. Bass has a thorough understanding of both his civil rights and the laws of his state. And he demonstrated that knowledge by knowing which orders to comply with and which orders to challenge. As mentioned before, Mr. Bass offered the deputies an opportunity to de-escalate the interaction, and his lack of compliance stemmed largely from Deputy Labe's attitude. Much like the deputies, I cannot fault Mr. Bass for refusing to roll down his window because there's no legal standard which compels him to do so. And without a court ruling on this interaction in particular, the legality of Deputy Labe's orders will remain inconclusive. I commend Mr. Bass for not allowing his emotions to dictate the outcome of this encounter and for having the awareness to begin recording immediately. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the ATA Patreon page for more police interaction content.